Thank you for tuning in to part two of my conversation with Christian Family. For your convenience, we have recapped part of last week's conversation. Greetings and salutations. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm Coach Carla, and today we are talking with Christian Family. Speaker, facilitator, lawyer, and entrepreneur. Okay, so as much as I'm now aware that I'm in this abusive marriage, I didn't have a plan to get out of it. I just knew I was in it. <laughs> I just knew I was in it. Okay, okay. I know I'm in it. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Right, and so what's cool about the program is that, so step one, they call it discovery. Right. What, what's holding me back? And what, did you, and what did you discover? And I discovered what was holding me back was I was in that marriage. Right. I was, so I was not authentically being myself. Then step two, call it breakthrough, it was three weeks later. And here's an opportunity to break through whatever those limiting beliefs are, whatever it is that's holding me back. I knew I needed to continue into the training. The Wednesday night before that training, I felt him starting to fight with me. Mm. And I'm, before the breakthrough? Before the breakthrough training. Okay. Now, I'm feeling myself all empowered. I had these new tools, right, I learned from discovery. He kept doing things to try to get a rile out of me. But I wouldn't, mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't engage. I was different. He finally picked the baby up and left with the baby. And anybody that is a mother knows. Not the baby. Not the baby. That's the instinct, right? That was going to be the thing that made me move. But I stopped and I breathed and I said, look, God, if he kills that baby, that's on him. And it was a hard thing to have to think, but what was I going to do right. by jumping up and checking? What was, what was going to happen? Right. Right. So ultimately, he did pass out holding the baby. The baby lived. I got to get out of this. So I still didn't have a plan. Still no plan. Still no plan. Still still no plan. plan. So you had the breakthrough. You had the breakthrough. Right? So Thursday, uh, I go to the training. That's the next day, right? Thursday night, I get in late. I don't want to talk to him. I sleep upstairs away. Friday, same kind of thing. I don't see him. I don't want to talk to him. Finally, I said, listen, I'll talk to you on Saturday in the morning before I go. I knew he wanted to still talk about what we was fighting about on Wednesday, and sure enough, he did. Peeking in the shower on me. You remember? Really? Are we still on this? It's now Thursday, Friday. It's three days later. Three I, haven't, days later. I haven't spoken to you in 72 hours. And we still talking about the same thing? Right. And then he opened up the door. He said, what? You want a divorce? It <laughs> ain't plainer, but I, cause I was really finally living my truth. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was so busy wanting to not be divorced. Right. If he would say that, it would make me say, so, "Oh no, baby, no, no, we gon' make this work." Right. Right. And so, the breakthrough gave me the courage to kind of be myself and speak, speak my speak. truth. And so I finished that part of the training. Amen. And they had a third part of the training, uh, right? Which we call, right? VIP, which is your vision impact program. And I knew I was going to need that program, which was like really three months, because I was going to need the support. Right. This was a major transition. Right. And I did it, and it was awesome. And being the overachiever that I am. Overachiever. I know her. Overachiever. Overachiever. They have a fourth part of the program, which is FIT, Facilitator and Transformation Training. And it was a six-month process. Mm -hmm. I went into it, and it was a beautiful thing. Because the day, in fact, that I was officially divorced, I was going into one of my sessions with my community. It's the safest place I could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it was just, it was, it was a beautiful and a safe place to be. And it also helped me to strengthen and better my speaking skills, which I've already had. Right. And it helped me to be able to spot new opportunities when they came along. And so this time, so even though for seven years, as long as I've been in that relationship, I've been threatening to do a TED Talk. When it came through that they were doing live auditions, I went. We went. We went together. Because people with the information will always share the information. That's the truth. You can really write that down somewhere. Yeah. And how I went and I uh, shared about divorce. And I had an opportunity to present a TED Talk. Tell us. Uh, so now we're at the TED Talk moment. Because if you don't understand what TED Talk is, mm -hmm. let's find out a little bit Tell us what TED Talk is. Ooh. So TED stands for Technology, I want to say Entertainment and Design. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that. We'll get it right. Right. <laughs> right. Technology, Entertainment and Design. But it's the idea that their ideas worth spreading. 
Mm -hmm. So it's just an opportunity for people who are subject matter, matter experts yeah. to give a succinct talk of sorts on a particular topic. There is Big Ted, which Big Ted. people hear about. And usually you hear like those are really kind of famous people presented those. And then there are a lot of independently organized TED events, and those are TEDx. And so there's three individual ones here in Columbus. There's TEDx Columbus, there's TEDx Columbus Women's, and there was the TEDx King Lake in Bronzeville. And I was in the TEDx Columbus. Okay, so what was your topic? Rethinking divorce. What do you mean rethinking divorce? It's uh, It goes back to that about divorce is not this family destroying monster to be avoided. Mm -hmm. Because that's who it was to me, having been introduced to it at seven. Right. This thing to avoid. Right. And thinking about it that way had me in two marriages that didn't serve me. Okay, well, we heard about the first one. What? I mean, the second one, there was the first one? There was the first one. Tell us about the, about the first one. Girl, that story is too big. I don't know. You want that one too? Just give me a little bit. Okay, I need a little bit. Give so me a tip talk. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, the first marriage was three years, no kids. No kids, okay. And we were long distance even inside the marriage and that he traveled for work. I called myself in that one single wife. Single wife. Single wife. There's some terms that are being created. Some we're going to keep. Mm -hmm. Single wife. We're going to pray on that one. Yeah, no, you don't want to keep single wife. Single wife is, is a sign. Single right. wife is a red flag. Right. <laughs> they don't go together. I tried to make them go together. Because I knew there was something wrong. Does it make sense inside yes. of marriage? But I couldn't put it together, so I called myself single wife. He ultimately left me for his boyfriend. Did, I'm sorry. Yeah. He, he, mm -hmm. he was not living his truth. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. And I wasn't living mine either. Because inside the marriage, he was clearly rejecting me a mm. lot. You know, mm. like I'd be dressed in lingerie, like have me for dessert. And he really want to have dessert. He was like, I'm, I'm not doing dessert this week. <laughs> you don't want none of this? Right. And then the realization was, he didn't. He didn't. He really, he really didn't. Um, what did that want make you do? That one, I could say, shattered me into reality. Mm. Now, when you use that term, I love when you use that term. Mm -hmm. Shattered into reality. It has been trademarked and copyrighted. By Crystal Chapman. Shatter into reality. What do you mean? Mm. I was living in a fantasy place in my world, mm. in my world, in my mind. I, I had created a place where I was in this healthy, happy marriage that was going to last forever, where everything was perfect. But it couldn't have possibly been. Right. If before my third anniversary, he comes to me and says, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Ooh. I don't love you the way a husband should love a wife. That's kind of harsh. Clearly, there was a disconnect mm -hmm. because I was living in fantasy and not in reality. Mm -hmm. And it shattered me into reality. It drove me into therapy, and thank God for therapy. Therapy is needed and necessary, especially if you know you need it and it's necessary. Mm -hmm. That'll be another show. How about that? Sent me to divorce care, which was awesome. And just it was a real opportunity just to figure out how did how did I get here? <laughs> how did I get here? Okay. Mm -hmm. So your TED talk, it was rethinking divorce. Yeah. Seven divorces between you and your parents, mm -hmm. two of yours, mm -hmm. and now you are an advocate for marriage, but you'll divorce somebody in a second. What should people have taken away from your TED talk? What you should take away from my TED talk is this. If you find yourself in a divorce, one, take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because even if you feel like a victim, you were an active participant in that marriage. Yes. And therefore, the divorce, which was a result of everything that led up to it, you were a part of that too. Right. Two, don't judge yourself mm -hmm. because you ended up in a divorce. Everybody is always doing the best they can with the information they have at the time that they had. Right. I didn't do the wrong thing staying married to my children's father for seven years. There was nothing wrong with that. Right. 
I don't judge myself. Good for the decisions that I made in that. And the third is that just because I have made those decisions in the past, choosing maybe the wrong people, does not disqualify me mm -hmm. from having a beautiful, healthy, and happy marriage in the future. Some people think it does. Right. And Some it's... people, you'll hear stories of people that so was so enmeshed in that marriage that when it did end in divorce, mm -hmm. their life literally ended. Exactly. They stopped living, they stopped believing that there was another opportunity, that you know the Lord had forgiven them. Mm -hmm. Because one, people, people forget the Lord does not want you in a situation to where anybody will be over him mm -hmm. and that you may get taken out. You are his child. Mm -hmm. And men, men and women alike. You are his child. Especially if you're a believer. Mm -hmm. You're his child. And he wants to see the best in you. And the best does not mean going to a meeting with a black eye. But people have done it. it it's domestic violence is because it, it, it always has been a beast. Yes. But now it is becoming gargantuan because of all the information that is now available that people are, are able to access and make decisions on. But yet, people are still staying. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, there are some very tragic stories on the other side of staying in a, in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. But there are also some champions and some people that are coming out and saying, you don't have you to. Don't have to. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. And in your TED talk, mm -hmm. you talk about these things. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a, a young girl or a group of girls mm -hmm. that have just in your TED talk mm -hmm. and they have the mindset of the youth today? Oh, I'm invincible. I will live forever. Nothing's going to hurt me. You know, that's not my life. You don't have they do the head and, you know, you know I can't do it because I have boats in my neck. Um, <laughs> I'm over 15, so I can't do all of that. Well, what would you tell girls, impressionable girls, that have just seen your TED Talk, that may not fully understand what this, it can impact on them? What would you tell them? That's a good question. The key is this. It's okay to date. It's okay. It's okay to like. It's okay to love. It's okay to change your mind. Mm -hmm. Everything does not have to be forever. Forever. Be honest about what you want, about what is acceptable to you, and about what is not acceptable right. to you. Right. And the key thing that people do not always listen to. Tell me. Tell me. Listen to your friends and your family because they can see things that you cannot. Listen. Listen, that is a show by itself. Okay. Some people are so focused. Mm -hmm. I'm, you just jealous. You, there was a song mm -hmm. back in the day when the sisters were trying to tell us, it's like, no, what, you need to leave that guy. I was like, no, I just love the man. I just love the man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, no, no. And too many times, those stories end tragically. Yep. The interesting thing even to this day, my daughter knows you date somebody I don't know. As soon as I see them, it's like, so what was the hold up for you coming to meet me? Right. What, what was the problem? Even when she was a teen, mm -hmm. if uh, some young man was coming and he blew and they come to the door, oh, no. she went and sat down. She right. said, no, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because he's already showing you how he's going to treat you. Mm -hmm. You That's have no say. value. Mm -hmm. You are a pop mom. Come on out. How about that? And if you don't come out, guess what? I'm going to go down the block. Somebody will come out. The one that will come to the door mm -hmm. and greet your parents yep. and show them. And you can have opportunity to get some Q&A. Right. Because the way she left is the way she meant to come back. And I was the mother. But can you imagine the fathers? Mm -hmm. That's exactly that. 
we you you have to be able to understand that you have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice. You don't have to have that. You don't have to be in a relationship. You don't. You can be. And it's cool. And I'm about it. I want one. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with wanting one, but you don't have to be in one. You don't have to be in one. And you definitely don't have to accept less than what's acceptable. At all. Did we talk about the criteria? I was going to get to that next. Let's talk about criteria. Let's talk about the criteria. Let's talk about the criteria. You have to know, again, it always comes back to what you want and not necessarily what you don't want. Right. Right? Because people are always talking about these deal breakers. And, and don't get me wrong, deal breakers are deal breakers. I like that. That was the phone. So we just quieter. So did you get that out? <laughs> Rewind. You got to be quiet so you can edit. Okay. Right. Okay. So, but you also need to know what you're looking for. And why? Why? Now, on some level, I heard this conversation recently, and somebody says, well, you don't want to go with somebody you're attracted to because that could just be chemistry. I said, no, 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 no. Of course you want to go with somebody you're attracted to. Why would you not? Right, but attracted to is not the only criteria. Right. Right? Okay, I'm attracted to you. Cool. Now, do you have my top three? There you go. And if a person has your top three, it's worth pursuing a little bit more. Right. There may be something else down the line that pops up. But if they got your top three, it's worth looking into. Right. If they don't have your top three, it doesn't matter how attracted you are to them. They don't have your top three. Right. And this a top three for a reason. But first, what are you talking about? Your top three what? Ah, your top three criteria ah. for somebody to be in a close personal relationship with you. And how would a person go out finding out what that is? Well, there's two ways. Mm -hmm. The best way would be to come to my workshop. Ah. <laughs> Let's be honest about relationships. Yes. Right? Which takes us through a series of exercises and one of them, um, and they lead up to an activity about defining your top three criteria. So that's the one thing. And two, I'll just, I'll share with you mine. Right. And maybe you can see how I came with those three right. and use some of this uh, in your own life. So my top three criteria are generous. Generous. Independent. Mm -hmm. And interesting. Mm -hmm. Now tell that to the camera. Okay. Generous, independent, and interesting. That's your top three. Those are my top three. Why are those your top three? So my very first husband had, he was independent. Definitely. Maybe almost to a fault. He was able to live a whole separate life without me. And he was interesting. I mean, he was definitely interesting. That's what I was into him, right? He was smart. I was smart. We laughed about the same stuff. To this day, we would actually probably really be good friends. But he wasn't generous. Mm -hmm. Generous people do not keep information from you. Yes. Which was a big thing. He didn't care enough about me and my happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why he got into a marriage with me and kept me like that all, all that time. Right. Right, that is a lack of generosity. He also wasn't a big giver. There are different things about his character that just was not generous. The second husband, generous. Very generous. If he saw you on the side of the road, he'd stop his car and move you out the way. He's the kind of person you could call and would help you move. Generous. Generous with his time, generous with his talents. Generous. Interesting. He definitely knew things that I didn't know, which I thought was cool. And he liked to do fun things like I like to do. Great. Because I wouldn't be with somebody that wasn't interested. Right. He wasn't independent. Oh. He was not independent at all. He did not have a life separate from mine. Mm. He did not have an identity separate from anything. And it was that lack of independence that made him jealous and insecure. And those are all the things that led up to him being physically abusive. Mm -hmm. Good. So now a person coming in has to have those top three. They have to have the top three. And in your class, let's be honest about relationship, you talk about how they get to that point or how they figure out what their top three is. Correct. That sounds like a fun class. It really is. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, I, I record it, but next time I'll be able to participate in it. Correct. So outside of that product, that program, what else do you have available? 
Mm. The other major things that are available are co-parenting. It's co-parenting tools to make it work. Also a workshop. And clearly it's about co-parenting. So it's for people who are never been married, are divorcing, are divorced, right? Clearly you have children together. Mm -hmm. And how do we make this work from two different households? Also kind of an interactive workshop. So that's cool. I'm available to speak to all size groups about divorce, relationships, co-parenting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And if you in fact find yourself in need of a divorce, you can contact ChristianFamilyLaw.com because we are still a open and practicing operating law firm. Yes. What do you see yourself in the next one year, mm -hmm. three years, five and then ten? Perfect. Ooh. So in the next one year, I see me moving away from the practice mm -hmm. of the law, having trained up a team uh, of people below me who can handle the logistics mm -hmm. of handling divorces, and primarily focused on speaking and giving the workshops. In three years, I'd like to see myself completely separated from the law mm. firm, except for it would keep my name. And I am traveling around uh, in, in locally, nationally, internationally, um, changing people's lives, rethinking Divorce. You think of divorce? You think of divorce? Five to ten years, it just even gets bigger. Um, no reason to think that. Uh, are you familiar with Susie Orman? Yes. So, like, how Susie Orman is to finance, mm -hmm. I see me as the Christian family of divorce. Wow. Because it, it, it's needed. It, it's it needed. is. It is. There is a place, and while there's a voice in my head that always says, nobody wants to talk about divorce, there's not. A place for that kind of conversation. Maybe you should be talking about relationships generally or all this other kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, I do. But divorce is really my topic. It is. And, and, and you you do it from a different perspective where everyone is walking this way, you're walking back this way, and you're causing a wave. Mm -hmm. People are like, what? 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 what are you? Because they're looking back. Because what, what is your what is your tagline? Oh, so look, the original one was we helped Christians get out of the marriages that God didn't put them in, right? Because we felt like people had it upside mm -hmm. down, right? Because that's always the question, which is kind of what happens a little bit just off topic, back topic with those 73 day marriages and those little short ones. They, they didn't get divorced. They should have never got married. Right. They should have never got married. There was no marriage. They should have never done that. Right. <laughs> and that's why they were getting out of it. And that, that's kind of, that's what happens there. Um, our newest tagline is uh, we help people of faith divorce with peace, and begin again with confidence. <gasps> I like that. Mm -hmm. divorce that with says, peace. Because that says, let's say it one more time. Right? We help people of faith mm -hmm. divorce with peace and begin again with confidence. Mm. And you said faith. Because that transcends all faiths. Correct. Because everybody gets divorced. All faiths get divorced. Yes, they do. It's just, you know, not just Christians. Nope. Not just people that don't believe. Mm -hmm. All faiths, there's All some type faiths. of divorce. Yep. And there's still the gain, shame, guilt, and judgment. Mm -hmm. And every 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 denomination. Correct. With peace. Yes. With peace. To know that this decision you're making, A, is not going to disqualify mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. from a bright future, mm -hmm. from participating in ministry, from having the things that you want. It doesn't disqualify you. You can have peace. You're not doing something against God. Right. You're doing something for yourself. Right. With peace. Right. Mm -hmm. And begin again with, with confidence. confidence. With confidence that says, hey, okay, that happened. I participated mm -hmm. because that's ownership responsibility. Here's what I learned from it. Mm -hmm. These are the good parts because there's always good parts. There's always good parts. And here's how I'm going to move forward. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then when you move it forward, you're giving it your all. Yes. You're giving it everything that you got. Yes. Listen, how can we contact you? How can our viewers get in touch with you? Well, uh, if you're in the state of Ohio, I think she can help you with divorce. She can give you some information that you can right. take to your divorce attorney. But she can mm -hmm. come and speak to all over the country and the world about divorce and those different things. 
but how can they get in contact with you? Excellent. Thank you very much. So if you're interested in legal services, there is ChristianFamilyLaw.com. But what I'm most passionate about now, personally, is ChristianFamilySpeaks.com. Mm. And that's where you can find me to learn how to book me for speaking engagements and workshops. Corporate, churches, community, any? All of the above. Any place where you'll have 10 or more people gathered who could benefit from this conversation about divorce. I will gladly come and bring the workshop. I can break down speaking engagements a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, the workshop itself is two hours long. Mm -hmm. We're happy to bring it anywhere. You can catch me at Facebook. Um, I want to say I'm Divorce Answer on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. So you yeah, Divorce that Instagram Answer. answer. <laughs> And we're working on Christian Family Speaks, too, so that there's a separate place to find me for all of the speaking and the workshops. Listen, this has been an eye-opening conversation with you. To see where you came from, the transition that you made, the realizations shattered to reality, the fraternity you said fatalizing. 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 Mm -hmm. Helping people understanding that they don't have to fatalize mm -hmm. when they're thinking about divorce. Mm -hmm. That divorce does not have to bury them. Correct. They can survive yes. and be on the other side of divorce because you're helping people of faith mm -hmm. divorce with peace. Yes. And begin again with and confidence. And begin again with confidence. Ooh, listen. We want you to have peace and be confident and no matter what decision that you make. But first and foremost, if you are involved in a domestic violence situation, please seek help immediately. Find your local shelter, your local agency, the police. Someone needs to know in case you do not come out of this thing alive. We want you to alive. We want you to survive. We want you to have an opportunity to meet Christian family as he talks about advocating for relationships, for divorce, but mostly for marriage. Yes. But most importantly, for you. For you, and your authenticity, yourself, your survival, for your life. Thank you. This has been Coach Carly. We've been here with Christian Family. We'd like to thank you all for spending this time with us, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next show. Thank you.